Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where OP ends a terrible first date in an epic and disgusting manner. Our next Reddit post is from Rowan's Diadem. Ten years ago, when I was 18 years old, I was doing the online dating thing. I live in the US, but I'm about 15 minutes from the Canadian border. My date and I went to Canada together on a first date because I couldn't drink in the US, but I could in Canada and we wanted to go to a bar slash casino. He picked me up in his little sports car and we rode together through the border crossing into the casino. We played some games, had some drinks, and were having a decent time. I got to the point where I was decently drunk and I knew that if I had any more alcohol, I'd be out of commission. I told my date that I was done drinking and wanted to start heading home. Instead of listening to me, he got us both another round of drinks and he handed me a big Long Island iced tea. I told him point blank that I couldn't drink it because I was at my limit. He did not take too kindly to that and got pushy. He told me, you have to drink it, I bought it for you. If you don't drink it, you're gonna make me waste money. No matter how many times I told him no, he continued to push me on this. I got very frustrated and upset because I was alone with this pushy man in another country and I was very upset with myself for getting into this situation. We argued for a while and eventually I snapped and formulated a little plan. He agreed to take me home after I finished the drink. I took the drink from him and chugged it. We got into his car and started for the border. Now, it's important to note that this guy was very proud of his car. He spent the whole drive to the border telling me about all the features and how much he loved it. I spent the whole drive ignoring him and focusing on keeping my sick stomach under control. My goal was to make it through the border crossing at least, which was proving very difficult. We did eventually make it through the border crossing, and as soon as we made it back to the US, I turned in my seat to look him in the eyes and told him, I didn't appreciate how you forced alcohol down my throat after I repeatedly told you no. I know my limits and you ignored and disrespected me. I said that I couldn't drink more for a reason. Then, <laughs> while maintaining direct eye contact with him, I started vomiting in his car. I knew this was coming and specifically oriented myself to cause as much damage as possible. I threw up on the seat, the floor, the dash, etc. He was freaking out and I just started crying and telling him this was his fault and he could either take me home or let me out of the car now, but I will call the cops if he doesn't proceed with one of those two options. He dropped me off at home and I never saw him again. OP, the mental image of you staring into this guy's soul while you vomit spray across his car like some sort of gross sprinkler is just so funny to me. Our next Reddit post is from Chaotic Forking Good. So, I'm a bridal stylist. I help people find their wedding gown. I love my job, and 99% of the time, it's a happy, wonderful job with great coworkers and customers. And then, there's the 1%. I had a bride today who was very sweet, but just didn't connect with the gowns that we had. That's okay, it happens sometimes. She was fine, but her mom, and somehow, it's always the mom or the aunt was decidedly not happy and decided to trash talk me in Spanish the whole time. Does this woman know what she's doing? She's pulling nothing but ugly gowns. To be clear, the bride selected these gowns. I hope you never get as fat as her. And so on. Lovely. Now, I'm whiter than a jar of mayo and I don't necessarily look like I speak Spanish. However, my parents are from a Spanish-speaking country even though they're not ethnically Hispanic. I knew a lot more Spanish as a kid, but I still know enough to get around. So I waited until the end of the day, and as they were leaving, I said in Spanish, I hope you have a great day. Please feel free to come back anytime you'd like. We have lots more gowns you can go through if you'd like. You know how good it feels when you're in a ton of pain and the doctor finally gives you something that works and you're suddenly not feeling any pain anymore? Or when you're craving the hell out of a specific flavor of ice cream and you manage to find it? Yeah, seeing the look on that bride's mom's face when she realized I heard and understood the entire hour of her ripping me to shreds was so much better. Down in the comments, we have this story from Chanchito. 
I had just finished working for six months in a museum in Chile, and I learned enough Chilean Spanish to get around the country easily. I could understand most folks, but my accent sucked. While there, I decide to tour the city, and I hop on a famous city bus that's been in use for a long time. I move to the back of the bus to the first empty seat, which happens to be in the middle of a group of high school age girls. At the time, I was a moderately good looking young white male, thin, tall, and a full head of hair. As soon as I sit down, one girl says to the girl that I sat next to, I think he likes you. He sat right next to you. Shut up, this girl says. Her friend continues to pester the girl next to me. Say hi. He's pretty. Maybe he's staying in town tonight. I said shut up, the poor girl cries. They keep talking like this until my tour guide tells us that it's my stop and to get off the bus. I couldn't resist. I turned to the girl who was sitting next to me as I got up and, in Spanish, said, Cuisas el próximo vez, which means maybe next time. The girls all scream as I turn around laughing, and I felt super cool. Our next Reddit post is from Hot Pocket Consumed. About four years ago, I used to live in a nice HOA in a small town in Texas, and I enjoyed having only one neighbor over my backyard fence. The plot was about two acres, and the other side of the backyard butted up to a hayfield. The stars were beautiful at night because of virtually no light pollution. Until the neighbor decided to install an incredibly bright security light over their back porch aimed right at my back patio and bedroom windows. I tried to ignore it at first and put shades in the bedroom, but out on the patio, it was like having a bright LED headlight in your face all night. I consulted the HOA about adding a privacy addition to my fence to increase its height, but they said no because it's already at the maximum allowed height. They said there was nothing in the bylaws about bright lights, so there was nothing they could do. So I hated that after three years of waving to my neighbor and generally being friendly, this was the reason I had to come introduce myself to them. So I knocked on their door with a $20 bill in hand. I politely explained how the light was causing the aforementioned nuisance, and I asked if there was any way that I could convince him to point the light down or in a different direction. And I even offered to buy him a case of beer, with the 20 bucks out of goodwill and even a new motion sensing light. He seemed nice and agreed to point the light down, but after waiting a month, nothing changed. I went back to have another polite conversation and he said that he had changed his mind and he was going to leave it on every night and leave it pointed as is. Needless to say, I was a bit upset that diplomacy had failed and I started figuring out how to win. If the military taught me anything, there's always ways to adapt and overcome. So I started researching fast growing plants to create big privacy walls and check my HOA to see what was banned. I quickly discovered that bamboo, despite being very invasive, would grow super fast to make the neighbor's house and light disappear from view. And there was nothing the HOA or the city or the state could do to stop me if my bamboo happened to start growing on his side of the fence. The only thing he could do is cut anything that grew on his side of the fence. So I pulled the trigger and planted a bunch of golden bamboo, which grows and spreads crazy fast in Texas and grows up to 20 feet tall. I didn't care if the bamboo overgrew the fence line because his house was 15 feet from the fence line while mine was 150 feet away. So I planted a bunch of bamboo right against the fence and I only put the root barrier on my side to prevent it spreading into my yard. Within six months, his house and the light were gone from view, replaced by a pretty bamboo jungle row at the edge of my yard. Within one year, he complained that my bamboo was growing into his yard via mailed letters. His letters went right into the trash with no response. One time, he rang my doorbell, and I just looked at him through the window but didn't answer the door. Two years later, I unexpectedly sold the house due to a career opportunity. It's now been two years since I sold the property, and I just checked the house on Google Earth, and his entire backyard is bamboo. OP, it sounds like your neighbor was bamboozled. Our next Reddit post is from Reefer Fever. My neighbors have a teenage son whose friends keep parking in my driveway. I went to check my mail last week, and I saw them all out front, and I decided to nicely bring it up, which was met with eye rolls and fake okays. 
Monday comes around, and I come home to find three of his friends' cars taking all the space that I have to park. It was a 14-hour day for me, so I wasn't having it. So I tried to talk to them again, with the intention to make myself very clear and said that I'd make it the neighbor's son's problem. Tonight, I got home, and it happened again. I went next door, and an adult finally answered. I brought up the cars at my place, and I added a side note that their kid never expected. He's also been throwing his disposable vapes in my yard, and I have the other neighbor as a witness. So I casually asked the parent to get their son to stop throwing away their vapes in my yard, and the instant change in their expression told me everything I needed to know after I walked away. Shortly after, his friends left, and I can assume they won't be back for a while. Happy spring break, kid. OP, you got more patience than me. I would have just called a tow truck. Our next Reddit post is from Aiku. My coworker tried to claim my 15-page report as her own work to the CEO, but she got outed in front of him. This was a young woman who only got her job because her dad was golfing buddies with our CEO. She regularly blamed her team for her numerous mistakes and took all the credit for their hard work. Let's call her Karen. I used to go to trade shows, and after the fall season, I would be back in the office and create a comprehensive report on the results of those shows, normally 15 plus pages. The Veeps always wanted paper reports, not attachments, so I normally printed them out and distributed them personally to the staff. I handed Karen her copy as we passed in the corridor, then watched in sheer amazement as she marched straight into the CEO's office and said, I kid you not. Here, boss, I just put these together for you. I was stunned since the report was all about trade shows and she wasn't even in that department. Cue the revenge. I marched in there right after her and said, Oh, Karen, I just realized that my report has some numerical errors. Let me have that report back and I'll get you a revised one. All the while staring at the CEO with a slightly raised eyebrow. As I left, I heard the most wonderful words from the CEO. OP, would you please close the door as you leave? Karen came out about five minutes later as red as a ripe tomato. I couldn't resist asking, Karen, how was your little man-to-man -man with our boss? Our next Reddit post is from 8 Ball Witch. So I'll start by saying that I work for my dad at his store. I work the front counter and interact with most people and customers. Also, I look a lot more like my mom. My dad runs a separate business as well, but anybody who needs to talk to him for either business can usually find him in the office here. So this guy shows up this morning looking pretty ruffled and asked if my dad was here. I replied, you just missed him. He's out for the morning doing a couple of things. The guy was very displeased by this information and was acting very loud and unprofessional. He started looking around the store and eventually came back to the front counter with a piece of equipment that he wanted to trade for some work that he apparently did for my dad before. Keep in mind that I know most of my dad's workers and I have never seen this guy before. I told the guy that I don't do any negotiations when my dad's not here and I can't just let him leave the store with something for free. I told the guy that normally he probably wouldn't want to take that route but he was welcome to discuss it with my dad once he got back. He looked at me and replied, You're making a big mistake here. You must not know the owner very well, because he would do this for me and blah blah blah. I just looked at him and replied, I actually do know him quite well, seeing as he's my father. I told him that he could either leave or wait for my dad to get back. He kind of looked up at me and was pretty speechless. I could tell that he felt stupid and regretted his comment. He ended up waiting around in his truck for my dad to show up, and guess what? My dad was not willing to do the trade. It's almost like I do know my boss well. Apparently, the guy just worked like two days for my dad and then quit. Plus, the thing he wanted to trade for was way more expensive than what he was owed. As a side note, this guy hadn't gotten his paycheck yet, but it was on the way. I swear, some of the people around here are nuts. But this petty, don't you know who I am moment made my day. Also, the top comment is a story from Rum Bum Bun. I worked for a florist while I was going to college. It was owned by a husband and wife, and the wife's name was spelled J-O-A-N, but it was pronounced like Joanne, not Joan. 
It seemed like once a month, someone would come in wanting a discount, dropping Joan's name, but pronouncing it incorrectly. I always loved the look on their face when I'd correct them, subtly letting them know that I was aware they didn't really know her or they would know how to say her name. That was r slash petty revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.